respect to Cerrone. Is he staying at one? He, he looked phenomenal at one seventy. Yeah, he did look phenomenal That's at one seventy. Second fight at one seventy. Correct. Now Cerrone yeah. at the press conference comes out and says, uh, "You know, I don't know if the UFC loves me. If you look at my paycheck, okay. Now, me and Cerrone." are as tight as tight can be, okay? And there's a lot of personal stuff with me and Cerrone, too, on the positive side, right? But the kid made over $200,000 on a fight on free TV on the co-main event, and the gate was $900,000. I mean, how much uh, how much money does Cerrone expect to make on the co-main event? Uh, you know, the kid looks great. Never held a world title, right? And uh, made over two hundred grand. Co-main event, nine hundred thousand dollar gate, free TV. Yeah, Cerrone's. And we talked. We've talked, me and Cerrone. And have you made that point to him? I'm imagining uh, he, you he, have. he absolutely agreed. What he said to me is, I, I, I was half joking. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. He looked phenomenal. And the thing is with Cerrone is Cerrone is so inconsistent. Cerrone will come out and look like a world beater, then go out and get stopped in the first round and buy a body shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, well, we talk, you know, we we've spoken about this personally me and you some guys they'll be phenomenal and then when they get that major what's well, a title shot or the fight hey, listen, every fight's the most important fight for you, but yep. there are all those fights that'll change your life which is going for the belt and and having that main event fight where you just come up kind of short, you know? And that that's kind of been Cerrone's uh not curse, but it's 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 happened more than once. And then, but first of all, the guy's never in a boring fight, which is awesome. That's why he's such a a, a fan favorite. But uh, sometimes when he gets to that right to that top, there's a little <laughs> there's a little bit of a stumble. And I love the guy. You like, hear I, I, I never miss a, a cowboy fight. I cowboy Cerrone fights. is texting me right now. <laughs> okay. Tell him we said hi. Hold on. Let me see what Cowboy Cerrone has to say. I oh, know. I hope it's not a picture text. Things are really changing. <laughs> You ever send the wrong picture text uh, to somebody? Yeah, of what? Your cock? Of course. What else? Of course. <laughs> I've never sent a photo of anything By the way, else. this show's called Unfiltered People, so you should already know about our language. I want to know what Cerrone is saying right now. Yeah, what is yeah. going on over there? He said he wants to get together. He wants to come in and he wants to talk. Oh, so, that's nice. Yeah. Good, we'll get man. together. No, I love the kid. I love him. Do you Professionally think- and personally, I love Cowboy Cerrone. So, you know. And he's a crowd. Hey, every once in a while, listen, th- this day and age, you know, every fighter, every fighter on earth, especially when you look at the money that Connor and Ronda and some of these people are making out there, it gets crazy. And, you know, listen, everybody wants to make a million dollars. You know, everybody wants to make a million dollars, but some people get there and some people don't. Well, that's the way it is. As guys see that, you know, a lot of times, it, it, as any type of performer, fighter, whatever you are, you watch somebody, like you said, Ronda, the top of the, the heap financially, and you're like, wow, I'm not doing that well. But it's like compared to everybody else, you're doing amazing. There's just a few people ahead of you, and it looks like you're not doing well compared to them, but you got to look at all the people you're doing better than. Well, I think the thing that's frustrating, especially for a guy like Cowboy Cerrone, he has the personality. Everybody loves the kid. His fighting style is fucking exactly what I like. It's right up my alley. Everything that I love about a fighter Cowboy Cerrone is. Um, and, and he's a couple fights away from having that big fight. But like Matt just said, you got to win them all. Every one is the most important, and you got to work your way up, and you got to win those big fights. You know? And, and Cowboy... Again, a kid that I love hasn't always taken everything so serious. You can't be fucking rock climbing two days before your fight or wakeboarding the day of your fight or fuck, you know what I mean? Right. Some of the stuff that this guy does. You want to make that serious big money, you have to get in the right mindset. And the way that he looked the other night against Patrick Cote is the way you have to fight it when you fight Dos Anjos or, or uh, uh, Diaz, or any of the big guys. When you get to that big fight, you got to win. Look at Matt Serra. Matt Serra was on the comeback season of The Ultimate Fighter, which, again, I love when people fucking, uh, you know, this is a fucking joke. These guys are going to come off the comeback and fight fucking George St. Pierre, and he knocks George St. Pierre out in the first round. Matt, how much did your life change after that fight? Dude, look, I'm hanging out with Jim Norton right now. Exactly. It went <laughs> right down the me? toilet. It went right <laughs> 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 what the fuck? This is what happened to me? No. This is, listen, I'm still riding that wave, brother. I'm still. <laughs>
it was it was nice to see Johnny Hendricks beat Hector Lombard. And yeah, I I, I thought Johnny looked uh, better. You know, he utilized some good footwork, and you know, this is two smaller guys. And listen, let's be honest: Johnny Hendricks versus Hector Lombard was two welterweights fighting at middleweight. It was like Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor fighting at welterweight. You know, it was, it was the same thing because they're both they're both welterweights. Let's be honest. Uh, Johnny won. I thought he did a good job. Hector's a dangerous opponent, and uh, I was just happy to see Johnny Hendricks get a win. And, and I, I would be, uh, I'd be, I have to ask you, of course. Now, what, what is it about Hector Lombard you don't like? I've never heard this. <laughs> no, listen, Hector Lombard's a piece of shit. You know, I mean, what can I, say? I mean, just you just take one look at this guy, and you know that he's a scumbag. <laughs> um, and several times over the years, my interactions with him, we've nearly had multiple fights. When I fought Luke Rockhold at UFC 199, when I knocked Luke Rockhold out in the first round and Hector Lombard got knocked out against Dan Henderson at yep. uh, that fight, in the lobby, after the weigh-in, I nearly got into a fight with Hector Lombard. He's walking past and I say something, and uh, and, and I say something like, you know, he, he made a remark and I said something joking. And he turns around and he's coming at me and he's, He's calling him and I'm having to hold him back and this and that. And I'm saying, look at you. You're pathetic. I said, you're going to fight tomorrow. You're trying to fight me in the lobby. Wait. Get a grip. You know? wait, wait, wait. The case, I'm so for brains. I, I, I don't care for that guy. No, wait, hold on. Now, listen. I know you You said, ah, oh, you said a little something. Yeah, come, wait, that right. come on. Now, Mike, <laughs> listen. Champ. What, what, did, what did you what say? You, <laughs> well, come on. What, what did you say? No, no. I was walking by. And as I say, several times we've had interactions and as I walked past, he looked at me, I looked at him, and I went, ah, oh, this guy. And that's all I said. All I, said. <laughs> I said, ah, oh, this guy. <laughs> and then he kind of stopped, and he turned around and said, what do you mean, this guy? And I'm like, you know, this guy. <laughs> and anyway, there you go. So it was me. And basically, I started him, annoying self that I am. So you were just being a little annoying, he actually wanted to fight over it. Ah, this guy. Um, I'm mocking him. <laughs> you, you were just fucking with him. And uh, you must have seen uh, Jacare looked really, really good against uh, Tim Bosch. I mean, I mean you're, really, you're at the head of a very, very brutal division, man. There's nobody easy yeah, in that division. Yeah, but, but I, the division's getting easier. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jacare, if you look at him, he used to have boulders for shoulders. And now he's got like some like, little, you know, he's, he's looking like a skinny, frail old man in there. You know, he, he fought Tim Bosch, and yeah, okay. You know, he got a submission inside the first round. It was a very nice submission. The setup was nice. Boge went to scoot back to his feet and he took hold of the wrist and, you know, snapped on a nice Gamora. Um, you know, fair play, well done. On the feet, he looked terrible. He was so robotic, so stiff. And as I say, he's the incredible shrinking man. He's getting smaller and smaller, as is Joel Romero. So that's what I'm saying. This division is just getting easier and easier. The more time passes, the more times the steroids are out of the system, the easier these opponents are going to be. Uh, but listen, you know, J J Jacare's right there as well. He's another guy. I would love to fight Jacare. I would love to fight Yoel Romero simply because, you know, they deserve it, I guess. You know, in a roundabout way, they do deserve it. And I'd like to test myself against them. You know, I find it, I find for one, I, I find it refreshing that he wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. Everybody gives a normal, oh, I, I respect this one, but yada, yada. He just, oh, that guy's a cunt. Yeah. He was like, you, that's what I like. Nobody will ever say, what do you think Michael meant by that? Look <laughs> <laughs> I never called Jacare a cunt. <laughs> no, no, no of course no. You didn't Joel call him a Romero. cunt. I don't even know if you said cunt. cunt. Did I say cunt? That. Yeah. All right. You know what's so awesome? I see you. I, I see you on Instagram with your boy, and uh, I remember when you had him in the in the cage in England or Manchester. I forgot where you were, but you were you were so yeah. and you were having him in the cage with you, and he was up to your waist, and now you're up to his shoulders. That's fine. Yeah. you got a big boy now. He's all grown up. It's amazing. Oh yeah, no, no, he's doing amazing. He's uh, he's wrestling. He's doing jujitsu. He wrestled at one ninety five uh, oh, past yeah. weekend. Of course, I fight at one eighty five, and, and he did really, really well. So uh, yeah, no, he's growing up fast. Yeah, man. Soon you're gonna be telling him to put out the garbage, man. That'll be a, you'll be getting ready for your fights, right? I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> these, these, these new millennials are lazy fucks. What can I say? I tell him, you know, I say, take out the garbage, do this, do that. He's just sad. You don't do anything in this house. So uh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, before we let you go, Michael, how how long are you uh, how long are you going to be laid up for? How, when are you going to be able to get back into uh, to training? Yeah. Well, well. Here's the thing. I mean, I'm my own worst enemy at times because a week after having the surgery, um, I was actually sparring with Kendall Grove. Kendall Grove uh, was staying at my house because he had a fight coming up, and I wanted to help, but of course I get bored. So 
it was like eight, nine days after the surgery, I went in and did some boxing sparring. And then the next day, it was, you know, my knee was killing. So I, I rested for a few days and then I went and did some bag work. And then the next day, it was killing. So I've been taking two steps forward, one step back. And uh, just a second ago, my doctor sent me a text message. I've got to go and see him today. So um, I guess I'm just going to be, I'm just going to rest and stay off it completely because I, you know, I'm going out of my mind now. It's been three and a half weeks and I'm just sitting in my ass. <laughs> sitting in my house getting fat uh, eating crappy foods because I'm bored so sure. um, you know so I'll make a couple more weeks and I'll be able to start proper training but the pain is still there it's, it's still kind of painful but early summer to answer your question early summer I'll be back in there for sure